Ferguson is a, uh, just a microcosm of what's going on in American society, which is police is racially biased, stopping people, and it always leads to uh, black and brown people being killed in this country. Tori Russell, co-founder of the Hands Up Activist Organization on Race Relations in Ferguson, appearing on CNN on the eve of the commemorative march in Selma, Alabama, oh, also as Michael Brown's parents back in Ferguson announced they will file a civil suit against the police officer involved in that shooting of last summer. So that sets the stage for our panel. We are pleased to welcome in, on the right, Niger Ennis, who's here on our anchor desk, executive director of the Tea Party.net, and from Newsmax New York, radio and TV commentator Ellis Hinnikin. There's smiling Ellis. Um, let me begin with you, Niger. Mm -hmm. The lawsuit. Civil recourse exists, but is there really a case for Michael Brown's parents? I don't think so. I think uh, the Justice Department report, clear, report clearly uh, exonerates uh, the officer, uh, Darren Wilson, uh, that uh, they certainly, they, he was been, he'd been exonerated twice. He's been exonerated uh, initially by the civil, uh, the Justice Department saying that they're not going to file civil rights charges. And then, of course, Holder, when he came out publicly and he gave the whole perspective from 10,000 feet, he, he cleared Wilson again. I don't think there's any there there. What about that, Ellis? Do you expect the uh, lawsuit to meet with success? Well, listen, the standards, as you guys know, are very different in a civil suit versus in the question of whether to file criminal charges. What the Justice Department was looking at was whether anything there rose to the level of criminality where someone could be charged. Uh, you know, who knows? I mean, that's why we have courts, right? You file a suit, it goes uh, through the system, and uh, ultimately the jury decides. So we, we shall see. But, but don't assume just because uh, there's no indictment in this case that there will be no civil either settlement or judgment ultimately. Well, uh, speaking of civil, and this discussion thus far has been far too civil. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's good to have a rational discussion. But, 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 but in all sincerity, we heard from Tory Russell. And uh, he's part of that group that, that took as its motto, hands up, don't shoot. Now, Ellis, we had the attorney general the other day admit that was a false narrative. Didn't that same attorney general shamelessly employ the hands up, don't shoot rhetoric? So what's, what, what, what's the point? I, I mean, one case what's, does what's not a trend point? make. I'm glad that you mentioned Selma, honestly, because... Uh, truly, there remain persistent issues here that really do need to be resolved, or whatever your opinions about one case or another. Right? We are now in a position of rolling back voting rights, where are the very things that were fought about uh, back in the 50s and the 60s to try and give people a chance to exercise their most precious constitutional right now, threatened by these, these wait, wait, voter rolling ID back laws, voting rights, these excuses to, to, have an idea, to get people not uh, to vote. We don't, we don't say we deny blacks access to an airplane or roll back their rights when they have to have a photo ID to get on a plane. You're being very clever, Ellis, but I'm just wondering about someone who's involved with the Congress of Racial Equality, Niger Ennis, right here. When you hear this stuff from Ellis about rolling everything back, is this just the typical kind of leftist uh, uh, guilt by group association? With all due respect to my, my good friend Ellis, Ellis, that's nonsense. It's just pure nonsense. I mean, you need to uh, have an ID to get a bag of potato chips with a debit card when you go into a store. You know, what, what is that? Uh, trying to suppress blacks from getting a bag of potato chips? It's, a, it's absurd. Look, I have always said on this voter ID question, as long as there is not an economic uh, uh, problem for individuals to get access to a voter to a, a card uh, identification, the issue is not about voter suppression. It's about voter integrity because every illegal vote or inappropriate vote is a vote that you take away from an individual that has the right to vote legitimately. Uh, a minute left, thirty have seconds. You, have you all, by the way, have you all finished? Have you all finished with the insults? Because I'll give you an answer. No, you, you were throwing sure out some insults over the cars. You're, though, you're you? attempting to tell us. That somehow Did we're trying to suppress insults, voters JD. because Anything we else? want. Come on, let me hear it. I tell you what, Ellis, go ahead. You got 45 seconds. Last word this segment. J First of all, none of the things that you guys mentioned, the potato chips, the riding on an airplane, or the three of other, four other examples that you pulled out, are we have any constitutional rights to do. We do have, and it is in fact one of the most precious rights in our entire society, 
to vote. You guys know, cynically you know, the impact of all of these, uh, these demands for identification, these, uh, these uh, vigilantes standing at the polls trying to discourage people from voting, is that it suppresses like democratic and minority votes. That's the reason you want to do it. That's the reason in legislatures across America that it's Republicans who are leading this battle. And that's the reason why these demonstrations in places like Selma are so important to beat back that cynical We're going to come back and president. talk more. Ellis has had his turn. Niger next. It is in violation, and remember, just as 50 years ago, it took the United States Congress uh, to respond uh, in a way uh, that was favorable uh, to the protection uh, of people's rights. It may take that again today, because remember, these are 20 some odd individual states who are doing those things. Democratic Congressman James Clyburn of South Carolina on MSNBC's Hardball with Chris Matthews talking about the significance of the Voting Rights Act ahead of the 50th anniversary of the March on Selma. Let's continue a discussion that we trust will remain civil on civil rights. Uh, here on our anchor desk, Niger Innes, executive director of the TeaParty.net, also spokesman for the Congress of Racial Equality, or CORE, and our friend from New York, TV and radio commentator Ellis Hennigan. Uh, Ellis finished out the last segment, so we heard from Ellis and from Congressman Clyburn. What about those who conflate voting rights and the horrors of the past with the legitimate realities of people being who they claim to be when it comes let, to voting? Let me just agree to disagree with my, my good friend Ellis and with Congressman Clyburn, who I respect as a decent man. He was born in that era. Um, but you cannot keep fighting old battles that have been won long ago. In his own state of South Carolina, there's a guy named Tim Scott, happens to be black American, happens to have just won re-election to the United States Senate with more votes than the senior senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. So we're in a different world. We're in a different universe than existed uh, back in the 1950s and 60s in, in the segregated South. And voter identification is about voter integrity. Again, as long as the state makes sure, whatever state law comes up with a, a voter uh, identification to promote voter integrity, make sure that there is no economic disparate impact on a particular segment of that population, there should not be a problem with people that want transparency and want legitimate votes in the polls. I just ran for Congress, okay? And in a closed Republican primary, a black Rastafarian got 20% of the vote. Our voting integrity is of the utmost importance. I've experienced it myself. Let, let me turn to Ellis. Ellis, our president is trying to advance the debate on civil rights. Uh, he has compared the, the spirit of Selma with the deportation of illegals. He says deportation of illegals is not in the true spirit of Selma. Is that hijacking the legacy of the civil rights movement? No. No. I, I mean, it seems to me it's a different issue, right? Uh, but, but in both cases, you have struggling people in our society who are not given a fair chance who are trying to exercise their rights as Americans and become full participants in our society. And how are we going to deal with them, right? Are we going to encourage them to vote? Are we going to give them a path to citizenship? I, by the way, I would apply the same thing to the fight over uh, marriage equality and others who are trying to get civil rights in our society. Yeah, usually those of us who are sympathetic to one cause end up being sympathetic to all similar causes. I, I'm pulling for all of them, honestly. Well, the problem, though, Ellis, um, I, I hear you, and I, I, I believe you, and I think you're sincere. But the problem is you, you, you misstate fact. These individuals, these undocumented individuals that are in the country are not citizens, and they should not be given the right to vote. They do not constitutionally have the right to vote at this point. I think that's why the issue of voter integrity is of the utmost importance, particularly when we have this debate around immigration and you have the executive actions, which may be providing amnesty to some and legal status but not citizenship which would allow them the right to vote that's why voter integrity at the polls is of the utmost importance and don't believe me don't believe us conservatives believe the united nations you know several years ago the united nations
Republicans sent a special task force to investigate the United States voting practices and make sure there was no discrimination. And do you know what they found? They found that they were shocked that the United States does not use identification like most of the rest of the world. Last word to Ellis. Ellis, you got the last 30 seconds. Does it surprise you guys that the people who are pushing all these strict new rules at the polls are only Republican and conservatives? Does that, does that surprise you at all? Do you think that's just random or that maybe Republicans care more about the Constitution than Democrats well, uh, again, do? Or again, they're, they're, that's... they're more concerned about fraud? I'll tell you the reason in my okay. final few seconds here. The reason is that these things have political impact. And the political, political impact of denying poor and minorities an easy chance to vote... Gotta go. Thanks. Thank you. Gave him the time.